1988 for the Oral History Project of Historic Madison. I, Lorraine Orchard, am talking with Miss Alice Elizabeth Felt, F-E-L-T, at her home at 306 Highland Avenue. Alice, I have known you for a long time because I used to stop in at Rentschler's Greenhouse on the corner of Highland Avenue and um, Regent Street. And I knew you lived nearby, but I never knew exactly where. How long have you been in this home? 63 years. And we lived out here. So it came out when I was 20 years old. So then we've been here 63 years. And you lived here with your parents yeah. then. Any brothers or sisters? Uh, a brother and a sister. My other brothers were married. My other brother and sister were married. What were your sister and brother's names? Uh, Marie was the oldest. Raymond, Lorraine, um, Jerome, and, and myself. I knew Jerome Felt. We went to Randall's school together. Where is he now? He's retired. And uh, <laughs> he worked at the uh, Wisconsin Journal for, as an electrician. He had uh, five children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fine. Well, uh, let's talk about this neighborhood. Um, have you seen a lot of changes in it? In, since you lived here. Did you say which year you came? You said you were 20 years old, right? 20 years old. Well, when we moved out here, the uh, Highland Avenue was a dirt road. That, uh, and the only traffic that we saw was funerals. Uh, that, um, and and uh, out here there was, um, well, there were only about five, I'd say, Two houses on Chamberlain Avenue, and two, uh, two, uh, three houses on Kendall Avenue, and the house next door, and the one down on the corner of Kendall, oh. and those two across the street were the only houses here. Hmm. Which year was that then? It's about 63, because I'm going to be 83. So it was 19... 1960... 1930... Oh, just a moment. <laughs> and when, when we... That was 1925 then. Yeah. And when we moved out here, there was, on Kendall Avenue, a slaughterhouse. So they moved that up about uh, 20 years later and made a home out of us. And then uh, on the corner, uh, down there, there was a Corkins grocery store and a barber shop on University Avenue. Mm -hmm. And uh, <coughs> when, uh, but there, there wasn't much traffic. And up at West High, where West High is now, was a great big cornfield. It was a carpenter's cornfield. And they lived mm -hmm. down on the corner of Allen and Regent. She had cows and everything down there. And <coughs> the, um, uh, the, the uh, streetcar was, uh, they had that, um, going over Spooner Street was a, I got a uh, bridge, and they took that out. And we had a bus that we used to call the Tunerville Trolley yes. bus. <laughs> and they would, you'd have to walk up to the, up to the cemetery to get the bus, then uh, they take you over to Monroe Street, and there you get the streetcar. And, uh, and then when I, I uh, well, I said, there's been a big, big change out here since, uh, since then. Mm -hmm. It was a drugstore, and they were there for a long, long time. And then when West High was built, they had to close because the kids stole the line. Oh. They say closed. And then there was a, a, when we moved out here, there was an AMP grocery store next to where Renabums were on mm -hmm. University mm -hmm. Avenue. And uh, at Miller's Meat Market, they built that big place across the street. 
which is now a, a spaghetti place. Mm -hmm. That was uh, Miller's Market. Then after Miller's Market moved out, then there was a beauty parlor in there. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I, uh, I said, and then down on, on the corner of Regent and Allen, there was a drugstore and the handy shop. And they had both clothes because they, and, that, that, and there was a bakery shop at the end of that shopping center. Hagerick's. Uh, you know, ha Hagerick's. Hagerick, yeah. yeah. I used yeah. to go there. And, uh, but uh, the man that ran the handy shop had a clothes because the West High kids would just go in there and keep taking things and taking things. So he closed and the man that ran the, where the antique store is now, he closed up to very mm -hmm. nice fellow. Oh really? Mm -hmm. On the corner of Regent yeah, now? Yeah, it was a drugstore. Very, very nice fellow. And, oh. uh, and then next door to that on Allen Street was Palm's Shoe Store and a beauty park. And, and, uh, the, and the lady, Mrs. Klein, lived on the corner and she raised birds. Hmm. Canaries. Hmm. So and I said it's been a big, big change. Right. Do you remember when West High was built? I know it opened in the fall of 1930. Do you remember the construction and controversy? Yeah, it took, it took or them about uh, about um, two, uh, almost two years before they had it built, and, and then they didn't build it all. They put a, an addition on later. Uh, I remembered, um, I lived on Gregory Street, and I remember that people said, oh, way out there, that school, there will never be enough students. <laughs> and <laughs> when we moved out here, my mother, my mother was a very, very sweet person. And this one day her friend said to her, well, Mrs. Spelt, when you come to town, stop in to see us. <laughs> and my mother said to her, I don't live in the country. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Where did you go to school? I went to uh, Doty School and the Wisconsin High. And um, did your brothers and sisters do the same thing? Uh, my youngest brother, Jerome, went to Wisconsin High. My other two other ones went to Central, but my brother, my oldest brother, had, was very sick when he was 14 years old and he couldn't finish school. Mm. So, that, but the older one and the other sister, they went to Central High. Okay. Um, when did you start working at the Rentschler Greenhouse? And I think we should say that it's now part of the West High School athletic feel that it was taken down but you had a long illustrious career there I think everybody knew Alice at Rensselaer's Greenhouse uh, when did you start there? I was 20 years old so that would be I moved to 1925 mm -hmm. all right so in 1925 and how long then you you worked there 40 some years 48 years, and then you retired. Until they, until they tore it down. Hmm. Do you know why they tore it down? Was it just for the athletic field? Uh, well, there was, I don't know if I should say this, but there was this lady on the school board, I can't remember her name, she was bound that they were going to have their property for that school playground. And the ranchers went through three different courts to try to save it. and. Uh, then the, the, the agreement was for that the office and the new greenhouses, which would be four greenhouses, were supposed to stay. But it ended up that nothing stayed. I, I don't recall when that was, do you? But do you remember about when that was? I can't remember. It's quite a while ago. Would well, it be I, in I, the... I, it was when... The, I, I was 60, and I worked for two and a half year, days a week till I was 65, so it would have been about, well, it would be about 18 years ago that, mm -hmm. that it went down. And that beautiful rental home, that was heartbreaking. Yeah. Now that was on Highland yeah, Avenue, on Highland right Avenue. near the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. You know, I forgot about that home, but I remember oh, it was that, beautiful. It was just beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
and, and uh, they took everything. Everything went down. And I said it, it was it was a shame. People are still talking about that greenhouse should never gone down. Mm. But Darienzo stayed. He Darienzo's monument place yeah, stayed they, across they, the street. They wanted they wanted to condemn that too, but he uh, has to do a certain amount of remodeling every year. Mm. So that's why it can stay there. I see. Yeah. Um, what did your father do? My father was a city fireman, and his first fire was the Capitol. And he uh, was uh, <coughs> uh, down to uh, uh, the number one station. He started out up there, and then he went down to the number four fire station, and he was there about 20 years. And we lived down on Bedford Street when he was there, and he had 20 minutes for dinner, and for breakfast, dinner, and supper. Then he had a walk from the fire station home and had 20 minutes to eat. And he worked six days a week. His day off was on Friday. And my mother was always right there, had everything ready when he came home so he could sit down and eat. Mm. I said, these firemen don't know how good they got it now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and then when we moved out here, he was still down at the number four fire station. And I carried his dinner and his supper down from here every day. And, and uh, I finally, I told my mother, I just wasn't going to do that. I did that for about two years. I said, I'm carrying it just once a day. <laughs> Then she told him, said, you talk to your father. And so I told him, I said, I'm not walking down there two times a day anymore. <laughs> and he said, I was just wondering how long it would be before you said, before you, <laughs> before you decided to oh, right. Then he was transferred out to the number three. Then he was a captain. And then he was a Shorewood Hills first fire chief. Well, he was? Mm -hmm. Well. Yeah, we moved out there. Um, now the firemen cook right at the station, don't they? Um, do you remember anything else besides the Capitol fire that he used oh, to talk yes. about? He had the Kornhauser fire and the Hills fire, the Seneco uh, uh, fire, and he, uh, the Andelson Brothers uh, clothing store was up on Main Street. That was a big fire. And uh, during the, uh, uh, when he had to get the, the, the liquor, or the beer, the prohibition days, they had lots and lots and lots of fires down in the bush. In the oh. bush. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was one place on the corner <coughs> that uh, they, he still blew up about four or five times. <laughs> and he told my dad, he said, you no tell, you no tell, we get you. <laughs> so my dad told him, told him, don't you tell him, that was the still that blew up. Oh, right. oh they had you know, lots of fraternity and sorority fires, fires they had. Mm -hmm. uh, Hills burnt, Hills store burnt, I think, went there three days. Mm. It was a big now Hills was a department store on State. Right. right. Th is that um, Dayton Street? I. Uh, yeah. That's the corner, the corner of there. right across from the current Yo store. It was a big, big store, and Andelson's and Cornhouses burned three times. That was another uh, big store. Where was Cornhouses? On the uh, square on or the square? Um, well, it was, um, the square is changed, so it was uh, right, I don't know what's in it now. It used to be, um, it was down from where the uh, Parkway Theater, just almost next door from the Parkway Theater. Uh, Mifflin Street. Mifflin. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, oh, that, that square has changed, so I guess sit here and think all of the different places that are gone. It's really something. Right. Yeah. 
Okay. He was a fireman for 29 years. Then we were out to shore with three years. Then did he retire after he that? that? Out to shore, but they really got it nice. Now, when we lived there, they had one big living, well, the living room. There were four of us. <laughs> we had a Davenport that opened up in a rollaway bed. And the bathroom was so small, you went in and you had a back out. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a clothes closet, there was one clothes closet, and, and he felt so good he could stand in the door and sail the pillows up on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, was that a house behind the fire station oh, or above? It was right up, the, up in the back of it. Up. Oh, yeah. And then, see, he had uh, uh, university boys to, for, for firemen. Mm -hmm. uh, did Chris Bertelson succeed him? Do you know if it was Chris Bertelson or who succeeded your father? No, I, um, I knew him, but maybe there was someone in between, I'm not sure. <coughs> Mr. Geisler was at the head of the uh, oh, shore when we were out there. Mm -hmm. The senior Mr. Geisler, yes. Alice, let's talk about your days at Rensselaer's Greenhouse. Now, you were near West High School, and uh, several stores, you said, had to close at Regent and Allen and uh, the end of Highland here because of trouble with the students. Didn't you have trouble with West High students? Oh, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you. I'll never forget the day six football players came in oh. over the course lodges. Oh, and they were so noisy. Oh, it was, they were terrible. I went over once and told them to please quiet down. Well, they, they just kind of looked at me and thought they were smart. And so the second time I went over, I said, now I mean it. And I said, you can't keep your mouth shut out the door you're going. Well, they still didn't keep still. The third time I went over, I said, now I am not going to take your orders for the corsages. Get out. Well, they changed their tune in a hurry. They were very quiet after <laughs> that. There was a lady standing there, and she said to me, Alice, weren't you afraid to go over there? I said, yes, I was. I said, I was afraid. I said, those were six pretty big guys. So she said, I think you should be over to West High. I said, if you could handle them, I think you should be over to West High. Lady, I wouldn't teach over to West High for any money in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had another little boy. He was a little colored boy. Oh, and he came in one day, and he was with three little white girls. And he was really showing off. I went over once and told him to be quiet. And he didn't pay any attention to me. The second time I went over, I said, now I'm not coming over again. I said, now you better keep down your voice down. He didn't pay any attention. The third time I went over, I took him by the shoulder, and out the door he went. And I said, and don't you dare come back in here again. <coughs> he went, um, he, he went, and about three weeks afterwards he came in, and I said, didn't I tell you not to come in here anymore? He said, I just came in to tell you that I was sorry, and we, can I please come in again? Wow. And I said, well, if you behave yourself, I said, you can. And the, the other kids said that, oh, boy, wait till his mother heard that. She'd be down to tell me really what was what. I said, I hope she comes. I'll tell her what a naughty boy she's got. <laughs> so then I had the paper boys. Oh, they used to get their papers. Out. Oh, and I tell you. They, they were, they were something. They would be, they would, they would make more noise, and I could talk to them. And when I had to put two of them out, I couldn't let them get their papers anymore. And one kid, they got into a fight, and one gone out and got mud and threw mud all over the office. And I called up his mother, <coughs> and she said, "Oh, her boy wouldn't do that." I said, "If you don't believe me, come on up and look at the office." I said, there's mud all over it. And I said, he cannot get his papers here anymore. But I said, uh, and then, then I had Bill Malott, the druggist. Yes. 
Oh, he was, he was, he used, they lived up on Van Heist, and he would come in. He was about four years old, and he would, he would be real good, but all of a sudden he'd get naughty. And I'd shake my finger and i said, now, Bill, you're getting to be a naughty boy, you better go home. To this day, when I go, when I did get over to Malotte's, he got, if anybody would talk to me, he'd say to her, yeah, did you know her when she worked at the greenhouse? And that they say, yeah. he, did she ever shake her finger at you? <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, I had a lot, a lot of funny experiences. But I said, I have some lovely, lovely customers. I said, I need many, many, many friends. Many very, very good friends. And I said, I did, I did enjoy my work. Good. Yeah. Um, now you left there when you were 65 and you I know you were well known on the west side I used to stop in after school and maybe be able to afford one carnation or something <laughs> but you treated me just the same as if I were placing a huge order I had one man that came in Mr. McCarty he, uh, their anniversary was the 24th of December. And every Dece 24th of December, he'd come and get four red roses. Sometimes he was a professor at, down at the university. Sometimes he'd have, it, it had to be just at a certain time. So if he would be coming late, I got so that I knew that he would be coming and I'd have the roses wrapped up for him and I'd meet him at the door. <laughs> his wife, uh, he passed away uh, here about a year ago and she said, Alice, she said, I still miss my four red roses. But uh, he said, and Alice, he said, there aren't very many people, he said, that would meet me at the door to, with the red roses. Was that Harold McCarty? Yeah. Yeah. From WHA and Ruth, who taught yeah, at West. Yeah. Oh, they were so nice. Oh, wonderful oh, people. wonderful. Then I had Father um, uh, Conley from Bessett Sacrament. He, he would come up every Friday, and I told him, I said, Father Conley, you know, you don't have to come up here. I got your order booked for a month ahead. He said, oh, he said, I just have to come up to see how my Mary Alice is doing in her <laughs> flower garden. Oh. <laughs> so I said, I really... I really did, and I got a kind of big kick out of Father Conley. He said to Walter Faney, uh, you know, he said, I never see Alice down at church. And Walter said, well, you never will, Father. And he said, well, isn't she one of us? He said, don't ever send her pew event till you'll hear from her in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But, oh, he said, I did, I really, I, I really did have, have some wonderful, wonderful friends. Up there for Start again. A queen of peace. I uh, used to my father, uh, 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 McConnell, he was up at queen of peace, and I knew this housekeeper real well. So I used to go up there real, real often for dinner, and we'd go, I'd go with her down to play bingo, and, and uh, he was another one that he used to come in. He said, I just have to come in to see how you're doing. <laughs> and Father Mac uh, from Middleton, is really uh, one of the most wonderful ones you ever wanted to know. Mm -hmm. And I I am not Catholic, but he comes every so often to see me. Oh, nice. And, and we, uh, he, he'd come up to the greenhouse and we'd have the nicest visits. And when I do weddings out to his church, he does, Alice, I have to come out early. Because he said, I just have to watch you getting those girls ready to go down the aisle. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and nice. He was really... I did like all of them very, very much. I got, I got along with them all. Well, I knew you knew Mrs. Harold Peterson and Mrs. William Young. Yeah. And, uh, oh, I knew every, um, the, what was that? They, they, I can't think, they lived in the, um, that house of, they're gone. I can't think what they're I, I used to go out to their places for lunch. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mrs. Reese, Dr. Reese. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, she used to write, write, write to me, and I bet I was to their house four or five times. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I, when I quit, then there was Mrs. Ralph Norris. And uh, when, I, when I quit, she had the nicest big party for me. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, wonderful. Yeah. They are all a lot of my customers. And I said, I, I was so surprised when I got there. I, I thought I was just going over to have lunch with her. And here, with, here they all were. I said, that was a really a surprise. Oh, I should say. Well, now um, I see a walker. Is this arthritis? Do you have arthritis? Yeah. yeah. I worked too long at the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. The doctor said, why did I work that long there? And I told him, I said, well, I said, I did love my work. And I made some wonderful, wonderful friends. Mm -hmm. And I still, I still hear. The last three girls I had, I still hear from them. I get letters. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them, I, they remember my birthday and Christmas. I said, that makes me feel pretty good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well... It should. Oh, I have to tell you another joke. I had this one priest from Middleton. Oh, he was he was young. It was the first place he went, and he was he expected that when he set that foot in the door, you were to drop everything to wait on him. <laughs> so this one day he came in, and I was taking a big wedding order, and he came over to the counter, and he just stood there, stood there, and stared at me. Pretty soon he started. To and I looked at him. I must have looked at him very crabby. And I said, Father Irvin, I said, I will wait on you just as soon as I finish this order. So he was, he, do it. he went out and he saw his father Maggie. Boy, he said, she can really tell you all. Father <laughs> Mag said to him, she should have done that to you a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I said, I had a lot, a lot of funny experiences. All right. But I will say the, the man, Mrs. Rich, was very, very good to me, the boy's mother. She was very, very good to me. And Fritz, I thought an awful, awful lot of Fritz. He was at the greenhouse when I started working. And he would come up and talk to me and try to get me to talk. And finally, finally I did start in and, and, and talking to him. It was hard. Mm -hmm. As after, after three years, it was really very hard. But I could still hear my mother and my dad and Marie. I, mean, I guess she was really <laughs> my old sister. And she took me to the doctor that, after that. She said, don't talk so loud now. And he always used to say, Alice, don't talk so loud. So she said, don't say anything when you go in. So I, when I we got in and said something, I said, well, I said, hello, Dr. Lindsay. Went right down on the chair. Mm -hmm. He said, Alice, I never, never thought we were going to see this day. So. Right. Um, Alice had explained when we weren't taping that because of childhood diseases, scarlet fever and diphtheria, she had lost her power to speak. And how long were you not able to speak? This is when she was a teenager. Uh, well, I talked like a baby for two years, and I didn't speak out loud for a year. About three years and all. And then she wrote everything in high school, didn't speak, and then one day she did miraculously speak. And that's when her parents were overcome with joy, and then she went to work and didn't speak much at first there. But now we can tell that she's not curtailed now, <laughs> and we appreciate it. My dad said after I got my voice back, I, I made up for lost time. <laughs> Good. Well, this has been a pleasure for me, Alice, and pleasure to visit with you well, again. Did, uh, did I help you, Eddie? Oh, you surely did. And this will be, as I told you, in our records.